Hey kids, it's Piston Flyer here, hope you're well. And uh, welcome back to the channel on this absolutely glorious winter's day. And uh, I say that with an air of surprise in my voice because today I'm out and about on the Ducati Diablo V4 once again for my final ride. And the reason why I'm a little bit surprised is because I didn't think I was going to get the chance to come out on the bike again because the weather has been absolutely appalling ever since I've had it. I've had the bike for two weeks, just over two weeks actually. And every single day I've had it, it's been chucking it down with rain. So this is actually only the second time I've ridden the bike. But uh, you know, when the roads are dry and the sun's out, you've got to go out, haven't you? Okay folks, so welcome back to the channel and welcome to what will be my final ride on the, on the mighty Ducati Diablo V4. Now normally what I like to do when I've had a bike for a while is do a kind of a final ride video that's sort of the lessons I've learned about the bike and so on. But as I say, I've ridden this bike so little, uh, I'm almost ashamed to be giving it back uh, with such a little extra mileage on it. So I haven't really got anything extra in terms of lessons learnt uh, than I already had on that first video. If you haven't seen my first ride video, which was my sort of review, going through the specs, how it rides, all that sort of normal stuff, then do go and check that out. I'll put a link in the corner of the video. So if you want to learn more about the bike, that's the place to start. This is going to be more a sort of a sort of a vloggy ride with no particular agenda. Just a nice ride in the sunshine around the Chilterns. So how are you folks? Have you managed to get out on your bikes? Here in Blighty it's been a, an unusual winter. Unusual in that, well certainly in the south of England, we haven't had it really, really cold. We haven't had lots of ice and lots of snow. Although I know in the Midlands and north of England they have, in Scotland of course. We've just really had it very, very wet and miserable. The sort of weather you can't do anything with, you know. It's been thoroughly depressing. And uh, if you've watched my other sort of bike vlogs, you'll know that I kind of use the bike almost as sort of mental therapy. It just uh, just makes you feel good, doesn't it, to get out on two wheels. And this bike very much is a feel-good bike. Ducatis always are like that, aren't they? They just put a grin on your face. There are very few Ducatis that I've ever ridden. In fact, I can only think of maybe one. And if you're wondering what that was, I'll tell you in a minute. That hasn't put a big smile on my face instantly. Every other one. No matter whether you love them or they've got quirks or whatever, but they, you know, it's usually an occasion to ride a Ducati. And my goodness me, the Diavel V4 certainly is always an occasion. You feel cool when you're on the thing. I love that about Ducatis. So yeah, so if you're wondering what was the bike that, uh, the one Ducati that didn't necessarily put a smile on my face. That was years and years ago on our first road when it first came out, the original Ducati Scrambler. Well, not the original, but you know, the reincarnated Ducati Scrambler. And I just didn't, that just didn't do it for me. I've since ridden the bigger Scrambler, which I think was the 1100, and that was a nice bike. That did put a smile on my face. So Scrambler got, uh, got excused, but the smaller one I wasn't a big fan of. And I've not ridden one since, and that was years and years ago, so uh, they've revised a bike since, it might be lovely now, so. If you're a Scrambler fan, don't take that to heart. It's probably a much better bike than it originally was. So when I did that first ride video on this bike, there was lots to love about the bike, and I, and I hate not giving anything negative. The only negative things I could come up with it really were, well, one, the price, I guess, it's about a 24 grand motorcycle, so it's very, very expensive. Well-heeled riders only need apply. And then I watched one to kill on the mirrors. The view out the back of the mirrors isn't that great. But, you know, clutching at straws, if that's all we can find that you don't like about a bike, then, you know, it ain't bad, is it? So, yeah, my uh, lasting impression of the Diablo V4 will be it's a lovely bike. I like it a lot. It's got quite a hard seat, but it's actually quite comfortable. For shorties like me, I'm five foot eight, and if you're, you know, even if you're shorter than me, you'd find this bike very easy to manage because the seat is nice and low doesn't feel heavy at all and for a bike that's got such an imposing character you know it looks mean as I said and it's got loads of horsepower as well I think it's 178 brake horsepower it's just completely unintimidating easy to ride and it's a lovely thing so yeah thus far no complaints on the uh, on the big Ducati as far as I'm concerned we we'll check out these uh, red kites here see that up there will be will be look quite distant I expect on my camera but uh, this area of Buckinghamshire, well known for red kites, there are absolutely thousands of the things. There goes another one, look up there. They were reintroduced here many years ago, probably about 35 years ago now. 
and it's been a bit too successful their reintroduction in, in, you know they're the dominant species now I see far more red kites than I do sparrows the reason I've come up this way this is a place called uh, Walter's Ash and Knapp Hill home of RAF High Wycombe believe it or not in fact there we go look Royal Air Force High Wycombe there is the gates to it goodness knows what goes on there Space Command is just a bit further up the road which always gives me a laugh but the reason why I've come up here is because if you do a left up here it takes you to a place called Bradenham which if you've seen my channel before you may well have seen because I often go down there it's just a lovely little spot I love this road and I can lose that car you'll see what I mean in a minute when we get to the village green at Bradenham it's lovely down here if we're not blinded by the sun which I'm certainly not complaining about hello sir another biker out enjoying the sunshine it's got to be done well I used to have a, a proper job I used to work from home a lot of the time in fact most of the time maybe go to the office once a week and uh, I made sure that every lunchtime I'd go out for a half an hour ride at least on a motorcycle it just got me through the day maybe that's what that other guy was doing I don't know the irony is, since I've been a motorcycle vlogger, for want of a better term, I've actually ridden my bikes less than I used to. Now I don't necessarily go out every day on a bike, although I do try to if I can. Because it is just good for the soul. Particularly on a day like today. And I'll give you the Chilterns, folks. Or part of it. We're just about uh, 35 miles west of London here, northwest of London, and you're in this really nice scenery. And this is the green at Bradenham that I was referring to, a lovely spot. When you come up the other way, you can see the manor house and the church. It's very, very nice. Thank you, Sandy's white van. Gosh, I'm in a good mood today. This is what biking does for you, you see. Double white line, so at last I can't overtake the Skoda, which was my plan. So I must say a huge thank you to everybody since my last vloggy type video which was on the uh, on the new BMW R1300 GS I did a vlog on that a couple of weeks ago three or four weeks ago probably now lots of people were uh, wishing me well for my shoulder recovery so thank you to those guys and just to give you an update <laughs> sadly it ain't recovering well it's had some complications and it looks like I need another operation so in fact my uh, right shoulder is worse now than when I went in and had an operation on it back at the end of November so uh, it looks highly likely that I need another operation and I'm just waiting now for the beginning of March to find out when that operation is going to be so I'll let you know on that but uh, sadly because of the state of my shoulders it means I can't really do any long rides at the moment half an hour I'm okay I could probably squeeze an hour if I'm on a good day but anything much beyond that I'm stuffed so uh, tours and things are off the agenda at the moment which is such a shame because spring is around the corner and I really want to get out touring on the bikes in particular that new GS and in particular my Kawasaki Z900RS which I only bought last year and I haven't had a chance really to properly ride yet I'd like to do a bit of a tour on that if I can so that all depends on the when the shoulder op is the next op and uh, what the recovery is likely to be there might be a period well there will definitely be a period after that where I can't ride bikes at all probably for six to eight weeks so I might have to go off the air for a period that'll be a first I've never done that since I started the channel I actually started the channel about 16 years ago in 2007 does that work right maths wise but I didn't um, started doing things more seriously till about uh, 2017 that's when I started filming more regularly and taking the whole thing more seriously but since that time you know I've always uploaded regularly I've never taken any time off from uploading at least two videos a week sometimes more but I think after this next batch of uh, surgery I may be forced to take a month or six weeks off so apologies in advance if I have to go radio silent but I'm sure you'll understand the reasons for that but don't worry if that does happen I'll let you know and I won't be going silent forever I'll be back
a little bit damp under tar here this is West Wickham we've been here many times before on the uh, on the channel I love it here it's just a lovely little uh, ye olde town as you can see reason why I'm coming down here because if I take a right up here we go towards a place called uh, West Wickham Caves I'll head there now what they used to be home to something called the Hellfire Club which back in the uh, 19th century I think was the place to be if you were in power if you're like an MP or a local dignitary or businessman whatever you join the Hellfire Club which met in the caves just up here on my left which are now a National Trust property I'll just give you a glance as we go past here we go look Hellfire Caves up there there's an entrance there looks a bit spooky and those caves go way back into this hill we're just riding around they're massive you can go in and visit it's quite interesting to do it they go back there a long way as I say anyway all sorts of debauchery used to go on at the Hellfire Club that used to meet regularly there so that's what that's all about I think it might have been something to do with Benjamin Disraeli but I might be wrong about that I didn't do my research before I came out on this ride I didn't know I was going to be coming up here to be honest and then when you get to the very top of this hill it gets a bit off-roady so that might not be ideal for the uh, Diavel but I'll turn around up here at the top here there's a what looks like a church well it is a church with a big thing on the top of the spire you see that big ball on the top of that church tower that's known locally as the golden ball if you fly out of uh, Wickham Air Park the local light aircraft field here and there's a lovely view there as well down that way but if you fly out of Wickham Air Park that is one of the sort of reporting points when you come back in you report at the golden ball and that's what that is I think what it actually was when it was originally built was uh, kind of a lookout there's another one of those I think West London or South London somewhere I'm thinking Alexandra Palace something like that I think you can actually see it from there gosh this off-roading on the Diavel's not a great idea a bit slippery <laughs> I think uh, yeah you can see Alexandra Palace from there and I, there was some link there anyway that's what that's all about there's also behind me you can't see it behind the trees something called the uh, West Wickham Mausoleum which was like a I think it was like a burial ground for um, the stately home of the manor house which is just across the road that way the name of which escapes me but they do a lot of filming there I've seen it on episodes of the crown and stuff like that which were recorded there anyway what a rubbish historian and tour guide I am because I've only got your partial information I should have done some research before I came out today I just saw that the Sun was out I saw the key to the Diavel and thought I've got to get out there and ride it anyway that's what that place is all about just down the bottom of this little winding road as we head back to the Hellfire Caves there's a beautiful little hamlet I don't know what it's called but again it looks really old old-fashioned I'll show it to you when we get down here here we are just ahead look I've never been down that road because it's a dead end and it's really you know steep and stuff no idea whether I could turn around etc Church Lane look it's called but it looks fascinating down there there's uh, more history around this area than you might necessarily think at first glance one of the things I love about Blighty there's a lot to it in the past there's the Hellfire Caves again the entrance looks pretty spooky doesn't it right onwards well I'm saying thanks to people for comments on previous videos thank you to those that uh, mentioned about the uh, quality of the new camera I'm using the Osmo Action 4 oh there's that stately home is the entrance is just there I'll see if I can remember what it's called West Wickham Park that's the place what was I saying oh yeah thanks to those that uh, commented on the various picture quality and so on on the new camera constructive feedback always welcomed last a chance to wind the devil up slightly oh it's only a 50 bother slow down again Andy 
and yeah on that last vlog I, my uh, camera turned itself off and I was uh, wondering why that was I was wondering whether it was because I had it in voice activation mode and I'd said something accidentally that had turned the camera off and I appealed to my mate Dave from Really Good TV whether he knew the answer and he was indeed washing and he dropped me a WhatsApp when well, in fact we had a chat turns out I was probably using the wrong SD card in the camera because these Osmo Action 4s have such massive bandwidth you need a fast uh, SD card I didn't have one in so um, I ordered myself one if you're wondering it's a class 3 is what you want you just have much more throughput and uh, Dave reckons that's going to stop the camera freezing for me I've no reason to disbelieve him he's an expert in all these matters so uh, we'll see if that works it was amazing I was talking to Dave at uh, it's about 7.30 p.m. one Sunday evening on this subject as soon as I got off the phone with him I ordered on Amazon these SD cards a couple they're only like 25 quid each or something and they were with me by 9 o'clock the following morning and that was a Sunday order no matter what you think about Jeff Bezos and Amazon you've got to admit the service is pretty impressive or well, it certainly is if you live in an area like I do where the vans can get to you on that subject I just read a book actually called I think it was called The Everything Company and it's all about the growth of Amazon over the years and if you're interested in business and uh, how people get very rich <laughs> Jeff Bezos in this case then that is a fascinating book to read it's fascinating how he built that company now it's gone from being basically a bookstore to the everything uh, store not only does it sell stuff that you know you'd expect i.e everything but of course all the computing services and so on that it makes money from now and everything else that it gets involved in a fascinating book if you're interested in that sort of thing can't recommend that one enough it's a great read in fact i'll put a link below to that on on amazon ironically <laughs> so if you fancy a read it's one of those books i got hooked on i couldn't put it down and read it like in a week flat fascinating anyway I'll stick a link below to that if you're interested and if you're looking for something interesting to read just passing here up on my right this little calf here we go Chris's cafe motel looking very busy that was where we did the first ever biker scram with Jeff and Dan I think certainly one of the early ones and don't worry there will be another one of those coming along at the time of me recording this video I haven't actually got one in the diary but uh, I'm in constant touch with Jeff and Dan once the weather gets reliably warmer we'll definitely be out again on another biker scrand and again thanks to everybody that's uh, left suggestions for where we can go on the next one I've recently discovered a Facebook group actually I can't remember exactly what it's called it might be called something just like biker calves and it gives you a map with all the biker calves in the country so I think I might use that for a bit of reference for where we can go as well as your suggestions right national speed limit applies here look maybe I'll get a chance to overtake a couple of cars and a white van ahead oh it's a proper vlog oh that's a one of them okay let's have two then Overtaking is not a problem on the Mighty V4, I tell you. <laughs> I tell you what, it's been a while since we've had a Mercedes Sprinter white van feature in the vlogs, isn't it? Brilliant. One of the best white vans in the country for blocking the view ahead. Well done, the Sprinter. I tell you what, one thing this bike does need, and I've not found them anywhere, and I have looked, are heated grips forgot to bring my heated gloves out today back into a 30 so it will slow down didn't bring my heated gloves out today my hands are a bit cold as a cruiser I think heated grip should be fitted as standard so yeah that's something that appears to be lacking on the bike I've done the man thing I've not read the manual maybe they're hidden somewhere in a menu but I haven't found them yet what else to report oh yeah I was gonna just uh, mention about tours on the channel Lots of people uh, have left some great comments on the Japan series, even though it didn't get massive views. Tour series don't tend to. But lots of people said, oh, we're really looking forward to the next tour and so on. So thank you for those kind comments, for those of you that watched that tour. And uh, once my shoulder gets fixed, I'm looking forward to doing more tours again. But they're going to be slightly different 
in the coming year or two just to see how they go i'm going to do less exotic tours i've decided i think those uh those expensive tours that we've been doing i think one of the reasons they don't get so many views is perhaps they just aren't relatable just maybe a bit too inaccessible i completely understand that and uh, something i haven't done for ages is just jumped on one of my bikes and ridden off to Yorkshire or ridden off to the Lake District or something like that so I'm going to do more of that hoping to do a tour with Mrs Flyer on her bike as well she's still riding the 125 there's no reason why you can't tour a little bit more locally of course on the 125 so hopefully we'll do something together and indeed I've got a fire up the wing I love the uh, the gold wing is such a great bike I need to ride that more I think what I'll do actually is do a left up here I can have a quick blat on the uh, on the motorway because what I haven't done is tried the tried the Diavel on a motorway yet. Let's see what it's like for wind blast. And a little bit of M40, shall we? Oh, old pheasant, what's he going to do? Luckily, he didn't do anything silly. Right, let's get on the motorway and see what she's like at motorway speeds. Right, there we go. 70 miles an hour on the motorway is of course a naked bike so I'm in full wind blast but it's the good sort of wind blast it's not turbulent air that's hitting me I've got a constant rush of clean air on my chest and helmet it's absolutely fine and because on the Diablo you are led forward a little bit you're sort of bracing yourself into it so it's no problem at all so yeah if you fancy one of these to go touring and you have to do some motorway stints not a problem on this bike even without any sort of windshield yeah it seems pretty good on the motorway and of course with all that power as well if you're going on a German autobahn or something you get absolutely zap along on this beast of a bike so tick in the box for uh, the Avalon motorways all right so roll forward five minutes I'm off the motorway now heading into town it's a nasty looking uh, Rots and potholes down there, which I don't fancy trying on me 24 grand loan bike, so I won't be uh, filtering down the middle there. Well, what an absolute treat it's been to be out on the bike today in some dry weather. I know us Brits are always going on and on about the weather, but uh, honestly, if you'd lived here, you'd know why. <laughs> it's not that it's always bad, although some people often comment on my videos, oh, you always have terrible weather because I don't shy away from riding in bad weather. The problem with the weather in Britain is that it's not predictable so you can't plan to do stuff. That's what I don't like about it. I quite like having seasons. What I don't like is planning something on a weekend and then it being ruined by miserable weather. Anyway, I digress. It's lovely to be out today in the sunshine. There is light at the end of the tunnel though, isn't there? It's uh, already the evenings are starting to draw out lighter in the mornings the proper riding season is just around the corner so uh, yeah cannot wait for that to kick off so there we go that's basically it for my uh, final ride video on the Diavel just a sort of a rambling vlog really have enjoyed having the bike hope you've enjoyed the video do let me know any particular bikes you'd like to see on the channel in the comments below and uh, I shall try and accommodate the more popular ones I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until next time, this has been the Mr. and Fly and Cheerio. Hey kids, we're the Mr. and the Flyers! Flyers, Flyers.